Good afternoon, proletariat! Welcome to Turbo Tuesday. Here at MBT Industries, we are constantly innovating our way to the Yugist Revolution. Now, the working duelists of the world can't be led by just anyone, so before we can begin disassembling the oppressive metagame, we need to locate the boss to end all bosses, combing through 20 years of Yu-Gi-Oh! history in the process. As always, we'll give any fledgling leader of the Vanguard a quick once-over, a chance to prove themselves, and a performance review that will determine if they'll be called back to the next round of interviews, or if they'll need some effect adjustment in our re-education facility. Today we have a card that doesn't seem like it'd cause any problems. Gold Moon Coin. Before we check out today's corporate stooge, however, a word about our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck, the best online site for database searching, deck building, and strategy articles, all conveniently located at www.ygoprodeck.com. Now this card isn't exactly a boss, per se, but I shouldn't have to remind you comrades just how dangerous a dollar can be. Let's look at that resume. Add two cards from your hand to your opponent's hand, then draw two cards. You can only activate one gold moon coin per turn. What the hell? What am I supposed to do with this? It doesn't even... do... anything. Or does it? We'll throw it in Dark Warrior, as per usual, but with an extremely suspect win con aided by the assistance of some new cards coming out in Genesis Impact. Now, I don't want to spoil what we aim to do with this card just yet, but see if you can figure it out for yourself. Pause this video and let me know below just how you expect this dumpster of a deck to FTK. With that, let's send our leader to the Edo Pro ladder. So, it's time for our performance review. Our opponent's playing Ancient Warrior, a deck that aims to blind second without the help of hand traps. To people playing similar strategies, I say... <laughs> Good luck. We're going first, let's see if we can fiend that FTK. We'll lead with a normal summoned copy of Vision Hero Vion, setting a Malicious to the graveyard, then activating Malicious' effect to summon another one from deck. From here we can link summon and is sold, and activate her effect to get a Blue Mountain Butterspite to hand, and an Armageddon Knight to our side of the field. We'll activate the effect of the Armageddon Knight, as well as the mandatory effect of the Sword of the Deep Seated, to add a Plague Spreader Zombie to the graveyard, whose effect we will activate to bring it back for a copy of Halka Fibrex. From here we can summon a copy of Red Rose Dragon from deck, and as we Synchro Summon a Power Tool Dragon, we'll activate Red Rose to summon a White Rose from hand. We'll activate Power Tool Dragon's effect for a DDR, then activate Phoenix Blade to banish that copy of Armageddon Knight and bring it back with DDR. You've probably seen this before. We'll activate Armageddon Knight's effect for a Zephyros and Zephyros' effect to bounce back the DDR. We'll then activate the Graveyard effect to Phoenix Blade again and fire off the DDR one more time in order to bring back the Armageddon Knight, whose effect we will activate in order to send a copy of Summoner Monk. From here we'll overlay for a Dugaris and activate Dugaris' effect bringing back the Summoner Monk, and now it's time to perform some Link Summons. We'll summon another Summoner Monk first and foremost before going into Flame Swordsman for the requisite amount of Warriors in Graveyard and an Appaloosa. We'll cycle this copy of Phoenix Blade into more Summoner Monks and then get back one more time so we can summon from our deck a copy of Rescue Ferret. We'll overlay for an Alambertian and add the Gold Moon coin to hand. From here we can activate the effect of the Rescue Ferret for two copies of Quillbolt Hedgehog and a Psy Frame Gear Gamma. Afterwards we're going to make a Codebreaker Virus Swordsman, summoning a zero day to our opponent's side of the field, followed by a Link Cross. We'll get two tokens to our side of the field, two of those are going to become a Martial Metal Marcher and it will be bringing back this copy of Psy Frame Gear Gamma. Afterwards we'll go into a Herald of the Arclight and a Reproducus calling Light to the Link Pointed Monster. We'll activate the Graveyard Effect of Quillbolt Hedgehog and make a second Herald, at which point we'll make Ally of Justice Decisive Armor. We'll use both Heralds to get two 4,000 attack point Light Rituals to our hand, which we will give to our opponent, activate the effect of Ally of Justice Decisive Armor, and hit for 8k! Well, we're back. And just how did Cold Hard Capital perform? Let's consult our super scientific metrics above. I'm giving this talisman of capitalism a 1 in terms of consistency. Like all Dark Warrior setups, you've got about 9 Garnets and 2 Starters. I'm giving this definitive best shell for Drytron a 1 in terms of investment. Yeah, I don't think you can incidentally gold moon your opponent the tools to win. I'm giving this feudal FTK a 3 in terms of payoff. It does win you the game. That said, my final verdict is... A pass on gold moon coin. Jillian, don't bother warming up a gulag. This one walks free because it's so funny.